Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for accepting our uh, short term invitation. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. So we will start with within another five minutes, sir. Sir, we will start in another five minutes, sir. Students are about to join, sir. Uh, they have class up to exactly three o'clock, so they will be joining on time. So we will wait for another five minutes and we can start, sir. Sure, sure. Yes, sir. Thank you, thank you, sir.
சொல்லுங்க மேடம் ஆமாம் மேடம் மீட்டிங்லாம் நான் இருக்கேன் ஓகேங்க மேம் ஓகே மேம் சரிங்க மேம் தேங்க்யூ மேம்
Yes, sir. Sakti Vinayam, sir, we can start. Sangeeta? Sir, yes, sir. Yes, please start now. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. A hearty welcome to one and all. As part of Science Day Celebration 2021, PhD College of Arts and Science Institutions Innovation Council organizes a webinar on science and technology innovations where do we stand for which is exclusively for, exclusively for all science and faculty once again we welcome you all for this webinar prayer should be the key of the day and lock of the night now we shall start this event with an awesome prayer i now invite the shri Ananta samsara samudra dara nauka idavyam guru bhakti davyam vairagya samraja da pujana vyam namo namah shri guru patu kapyam avipa varashi nishagara vyam daurvakya davam Kalikabhyam Duri Krita Namra Vipatti Dabhyam Namo Namashri Guru Patu Kapyam Nali Kani Kasha Padahrita Bhyam Nala Vimohadi Nivari Kabhyam Nama Jana Vishka Dadi Pradabhyam Namo Namah Shri Guru Patu Kapyam Sancha Parana Magilishya Kavyam Saha Sahayaksha Durandara Vyam Swanta Chabhava Prat Dapujana Vyam Namo Namah Shri Guru Patu Kapyam Namo Namah Shri Guru Patu Kapyam 
नमो थैंक यू फॉर द डिवाइन सॉन्ग श्रीमती हॉस्पिटैलिटी इज मेकिंग योर गेस्ट फील एट होम इवन इफ यू विश दे वेर दस टू फॉर्मली वेलकम द गैदरिंग आई नाउ वेलकम डॉक्टर पी शक्ति विनायगम सर असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फिजिक्स फॉर द वेलकम एड्रेस Good afternoon to one and all who gathered here for an insightful webinar organized by PhD CAS Institution Innovation Council. On behalf of organizing committee, I take it as my immense pleasure to welcome our most respected principal madam, most respected secretary sir and respected vice principals for their presence and spending the precious time with us. I am very happy to welcome our learned resource person Professor T S N Shankar Narayan Sir, Research Professor, Pakistan National Institute of Science and Technology, Republic of Korea. Sir, we are really honored by the presence of a well-experienced scientist like you. I do welcome all the heads of the departments, faculty members, research scholars, and students of various science streams of our college. I welcome all IAC members, RAC committee members. and all other committee members for joining this webinar finally i welcome each and every one who are present here virtually thank you very much every thought you produce anything you say any action you do bears your signature now i welcome dr k m shakti sir assistant professor department of biochemistry for the introduction of the guest of today's talk Good afternoon to all and all. I am extremely happy to introduce our uh, guest of honor for this today's webinar, Dr. T S N Sankar Narayanan Sir, uh, who is an emeritus professor at Department of Analytical Chemistry, University of Madras, Chennai. He has completed his graduation and post graduation and PhD in chemistry at University of Madras. He has completed uh, graduation and post graduation in Madurai Commerce University. He has completed his postdoctoral training in uh, Baylor University, USA. Sir has held several positions like uh, research associate at IIT Madras. He was a visiting research scientist at Yonsei University, Republic of Korea. He was a senior scientist at CSR International uh, National Metallurgical Laboratory, Chennai. Research professor at Chandok National University, Republic of Korea. Research Professor at Ulsan National Institute of Science and Technology, Republic of Korea. Sir's specialization is additive manufacturing, 3D printing, surface engineering, corrosion, nanoscale surface modification, and biomedical materials. He has so far guided nine PhD students and eleven uh, sponsored projects worth of uh, 1.45 crores. One project has been sponsored uh, sponsored by NFR Korea. And the Sarah's consultancy projects, like more than 35 projects, worth of about 1.80 crores in India. Sarah has published articles on many papers in various reputed SEA journals, with a citation of 7,551, and H index of about 46, and the I10 index of about 100. So this credit he has two patents granted, and Sarah has authored two books also. He has delivered more than 75 invited lectures on on various topics like surface engineering, corrosion protection, electro deposition, electroless deposition, composite coatings, fibro corrosion, and biomaterials. He is an editorial member at various reputed journals like. research and reviews in electrochemistry isr and corrosion international journal of material science e international journal of basic medical science and pharmacy and journal of experimental and applied research sir is a life member at society of sa est and electrochemical society of india society of biomaterials and artificial organs of india and minerals metals and material society and member of tribo corrosion network we extend a warm welcome sir for making yourself available in spite of your busy schedule over to you sir thank you very much 
Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the nice introduction. Um, good afternoon to you all. I'm happy to see more than uh, 58 members of uh, uh, attending this seminar. And I'd like to thank um, the principal of the institution and as well as the, all the members of the organizing committee. And uh, thank you for providing me the opportunity. Can you able to see the slides now? Hello? Not yet, sir. Can you can you able to see the slides and can you hear me hear my voice clearly? So your voice is audible, sir, but slides is not able to see. Can you ever see the slides now? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. sir, you can please just move on the slide. It's just showing a presentation. Can you move on? Can you ever see the slides now? You see? No. No, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now you can see. It's visible. Now it's fine, sir. Can you move on? Yes, sir. Now it's fine, sir. Both audio as well as slides are visible. Yeah, slides are visible. Okay, fine. Yeah. Yeah, good afternoon. And sorry for the delay starting up. Okay, today I'll be sharing some of my views at, on uh, science and technology innovations about uh, where exactly we do we stand and uh, what we need to do to make us uh, uh, to contribute more towards the innovations. Because we are doing a lot of science and we are doing a lot of technology also, but with respect to innovations, we still have a long way to go. So that's what uh, that's the main I'm, I'm going to talk about. It. If you have the habit of uh, reading science and technology column in reading newspapers like Hindu or Express, or you should have uh, followed some, uh, re re have the habit of re reading regularly the science magazines like uh, uh, Resonance or uh, um, Current Science or, or if you follow you know, some of the important scientific developments uh, in uh, social media, particularly in Facebook or WhatsApp, so if you sort of subscribe for such, for such groups, then you could be really aware of uh, the various developments that is happening around the world. Actually, technology is very, very important. Technology development is required for the development of man uh, mankind. And we might see that, you know, during the COVID-19 period and when the, all the schools and colleges are shut down, when we have the, we didn't have the opportunity to learn. Okay. And uh, it is only the technology development that, you know, through, uh, that has helped us to learn through online uh, education, through online education. So even now, you know, when we are far apart from, you know, so from Chennai and Coimbatore, uh, I could be able to interact with you all only through a technology development. So 
we need technology development in every every field of uh, uh, in every field actually when we talk about science and technology innovations and where we stand if you take a survey of all the innovations okay all the innovations and developments and classify them by country wise which country has contributed to which development it is obvious then that our standing is not that good okay so we are really brilliant indians we really we indians are really brilliant and we are very good in many fields but why we could not able to make some innovations so that we need to really think about it what is stopping us in making to become an independent inventor so that is many very much important that we need to think about if you look at the uh, policies you no know, the policies of the government the recently the fifth science and technology policy is released by the government in the year 2020 and we need to really know what is in stock for us and how we are effectively going to use to make us a better innovator in our field and the, the, i'll be covering up all these aspects in the, in the, the next one now so you might think that you know uh, having after hearing this uh, introductory uh, note you know you might think that the next hour will be a tough time for you but uh, i guarantee you that i will try my best to make it as interesting as possible and uh, today is march 1st so shall we march towards the goal of uh, science and technology and innovations so with that note i'm starting my lecture okay so before going to the presentation i would like to put a small statutory warning that you know checking your whatsapp and facebook status during the presentation of course this is your chance Okay. First, a few slides about the National Science Day because we are celebrating the National Science Day. The National Science Day is celebrated to commemorate the discovery of uh, the Raman effect. This has happened on February twenty-eighth, nineteen twenty, in the year nineteen twenty-eight, for which Sir Chandrasekhar Venkata Raman was awarded with the Nobel Prize in physics in the year nineteen thirty. So that is why we are celebrating the, uh, the success of. Uh, um a yeah, great scientist sir chandrasekhar venkat raman in 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 uh, in getting in identifying the raman effect in the in, in innovating the raman effect so it is a national science day that sense of it is a national science day and the quote is you know the science for people and people for the science okay uh after reading this now you might be hearing the something the politicians who use use makalal naan makal kahanan this like this it's a science concept science for the people and people for the science so that is the concept that national science day is all about okay Okay, let me see. Can you able to see the slides? Ah, uh, yes, sir. We can able to see the slides. So, why we celebrate National Science Day, and what what are the objectives? The first thing is to give you a belief that doing science would open up bigger doors for the younger generation. and how we are going to do by promoting their active involvement in science related activities we are going to promote the involvement of younger generation in science related activities we need to update them with the latest developments in science and technology and encourage scientific thinking for better understanding of the concepts of science enhancing their interaction with scientists and professors and promoting intellectual value of science and developing a science culture so that is what the main objectives what are the main, main objectives of uh, celebrating the national science day we need to uh, promote we need to encourage we need to give a strong belief that the uh, that doing science could open up open up bigger doors for the younger generation so that is the main idea we look at the theme of the national science day 2021 the theme for the national science day 2021 is the future of science technology and innovation and its impacts on education skills and work so the the main concept is uh, we are going about to insist on 
the educational development, skill development, and the development in Bhutan. This theme has been chosen for this year for the purpose of raising public appreciation of the scientific issues involved and the impacts science has on education, skill, and work. So we are going to talk about how the science will be able to impact on the education, skills, and work. So that's the main thing. When we talk about education, I would like to quote uh, Albert Einstein. You know, education is not the learning of facts. It is rather the training of the mind to think. So if you see that, you no, know, actually we are doing, we are doing wonderfully in education aspects. We are learning a lot of things. Our education system helps in a very beautiful way that you know we could be able to learn a lot of facts from right from our childhood. But we have to think whether it provides a proper training of our mind to think something new. So there only we have we are making a difference. Where there only the difference lies. So what Albert Einstein says about learning, that is the way to learn the most that when you are doing something with such enjoyment that you don't notice that the time passes. So learning should be an enjoyable thing. It should not be a very tough task for us to, to do things. That is not the way. So learning should be easier. So it is the teacher's job to make that the learning should be as easy as possible, as enjoyable as possible. So that is the responsibility of every teacher that you know, in the country. So. What Plato is saying about education? Do not train a child to learn by force or harshness. But that is not going to happen in our society. You know, every every because because of the parental pressure and social societal pressure that you no, know, we need to, whether we like it or not, we need to learn. Okay, that people are being forced to become a doctor, people have been forced to become an IT engineer, um, computer engineer, uh, or IT field like that. But what we what he says is do not train the child to learn by force, but direct it, direct them. What, uh, by what amuses their needs. Because they may be interested in certain things and uh, that should be um, identified, nurtured and uh, developed. So that's a way that you know you can make people, you can develop people and uh, you can develop experts in any area of that. It's not only by simply forcing that somebody to train, so forcing somebody to learn certain aspects that you can become an expert. Talking about our education system, so this is a very good picture. I have taken it from the internet. So what it does, actually, you know, it completely brainwashes. It completely brainwashes. And whatever the idea that we that we generate that we, they generate within us, okay, it is broken. Okay, and finally, you will be awarded with a degree that you have learned something. So this is a problem. Okay, I would like to uh, give a small example of a classroom scenario. In a classroom, the teacher asks the student, um, tell words for every every alphabet. Okay, one student says A for apple, and the other student says B for ball and C for something like that. And another student, he stood up and said A for another apple. He said A for another apple, but that was not received. Because that is the technically is a correct thing. Because the teacher asked, you know, to use the word A and kind of, in a word. Okay, instead of uh, apple, because already one student said apple, so he said another apple. So the problem is that you no, know, many in many places, you no, know, we are trying to uh, uh, kill the concept of uh, thinking differently. So that is very important, you know, in, in terms of uh, achieving uh, uh, and some innovations. So we need to think differently rather than from the others. Okay. And our education system again, you no, know, we are more concentrating on testing the memory rather than the level of understanding. Of course, things have changed a lot and a lot of improvements in the evaluation system as well as the grading system. We need to appreciate, but still we have a long way to go in this sense. So that only really makes it because learning the facts alone is not going to make you a, a big developer or innovator in science and technology. You may be learning, you may be able to understand, you may be able to appreciate, you may be able to use the technology, but not develop the technology. So that is the problem. In, Another major issue, okay, with respect to learning, 
this all we always have the parental and societal pressure the same person have to become an expert in mathematics he should be a good good in music he should be good in sports he should be good in uh, um, all other aspects it is it is very difficult you know we every every child you know is facing in the of the issues is facing the pressure from the parental as well as the society but you know you, the, the expectations are much higher the expectations are much higher so that we some of the many people cannot able to deliver in from the expectations actually this is one picture that i got from the internet and i wrote some uh, captions for that you know what is expected from the society is that we need to fit into a pre designed cage as we go let's see that you know it's a pre designed cage so what the expected is what the society is expected that you we should be able to fit into that pre designed cage and many of us feel that we don't have an option that is the problem we don't have an option my parents says or my a relative says that you need to be a doctor there is no other choice you cannot become an alternative person you cannot become you need to fit into that pre designed cage so that is why the problem here we need to have a, a, not only the educational system which is uh, you no know, uh, focusing mainly on the uh, testing the memory and uh, uh, not the level of understanding but your expectations from the society is also like that if you look at the this so we are good in research also we we'll talk about you know um this is a statistics about uh, the leading scientific publications how the countries are doing and if you look at uh, where india stands you know we stand our contribution in global contribution share is 5.331% it is pretty good we we are much ahead of uk we are much ahead of italy and germany and japan that is pretty good it's pretty good really pretty good. okay what happened if you look at the nations and regions the highest highly cited researchers and i could not able to see in there anywhere so that is a problem where it is going and uh, when we ask about people you know many says no uh, we need not talk about that we need not talk about that so that is a question we need to where uh, our people are there our um, uh, none of them in, uh, from india is identified as a highly researcher as a cited researcher so what is the problem with the research work are we publishing something rubbish it's not like that we are publishing good but still it is not enough it is not enough so that is the way, way that is going on with respect to research consider the patents india marks the highest growth in filing for international patents highest growth in filing and it is mostly dominated by indian pharmaceutical companies particularly redis laboratories sun pharma cipla and lupi okay we should be happy that you know we this you know this patents you know gives an idea that you know we are going towards innovation we are de- we are developing something new so then why that's why then only you can able to patent it okay but what happens is you know is the most important thing is it is not the question of filing the patent or getting the patent awarded it is the question of how many patents we could be able to translate into technology into, into actual products that is usable in the uh, by the by the consumer or uh, if the, some companies are interested in buying the patent and uh, developing the product so in that uh, terms again we have a problem if you if you convert if you if you look at the ratio between the number of patents filed and uh, awarded and how many of them are actually transferred to a product or a technology by the some by some company it is extremely worry because it is when you uh, it is not like publishing a paper when you file a patent you need to maintain it and for that you need to pay subscription every year the dean wants a huge amount of money the dean wants a huge amount of money maintaining a, uh, for a patent is is not easy you have have to pay so at least 1 lakh 1 to 1 to 2 lakhs per year that much so it is very difficult to, so and there is, and the patent is valid only for 5 to 10 years beyond that it is open in moreover if you file a patent only in india it is valid only in india in not in other countries you cannot protect the usage of that uh, thing in other countries so you need to protect it international means you need to file an international patent or you need to buy in uh, uh, file it in many countries but what's the point in spending uh, so much of uh, money in protecting your patent and finally it is not bought by anybody so that is the condition here why the problem if you look at that you no know, when we do research you know we always focus on what is the missing link you need to identify the gap in a research program it is like identifying a missing piece in a jigsaw puzzle good we are also doing 
But what happens? We are also looking for the missing puzzle. But without the puzzle, missing puzzle itself, everybody could be able to get a clear picture about what what is it. So the problem is we are also doing research and we are also uh, trying to work out all the, the missing uh, pieces and we are trying to fix it. But without that itself, everybody knows what is it. So that is the way that we are our research program is like that. Many of our research program. that is really what is it. So you know, it is like that. You no, know, using uh, Lego pieces, whether you could you could be able to make some uh, uh, toy structure, but whether you could be able to make a using a uh, Lego like pieces for a DNA structure. So that kind of thinking, that kind of thinking, we need to develop. It's published in uh, Science Magazine in the year 2012 using a Lego like DNA structure. Whether you could be able to make it. When we talk about innovation, okay. You don't have to be a certain age in order to be creative or innovative. Anybody can be a uh, creative, and anybody can innovate. Anything. It's not the age is not the criteria. First thing, according to uh, Professor Honjo, who was our got the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in the year 2018, you need to say that first you have to have curiosity. So we need to be curious. We need to be curious. How? I, like a small boy, you know, he's so curious about how the butterfly uh, sucks the honey from the flower. He's so curious. So like that, you know, curiosity is very important. Another thing is, don't do what everybody else is doing. If do, if, if we follow somebody and whatever they are doing and you also do, okay, you may you may end up in supporting their uh, uh, findings. That's all. So you need to think in a different way and do it in a different way. So that's what we need to take to the innovation. Innovating something is not easy. Okay, it's not that everybody cannot become an inventor on every day. So we really have to scratch our head. Okay. And uh, don't go and look for the books like that. How to become an inventor in 30 days? It is not available. Okay. It is not possible to become an inventor in 30 days. Okay. I don't know how whether people could maybe really learn to uh, make things in 30 days time. And, uh, I don't know how who fixed that uh, time time frame of 30 days. That things are possible within 30 days. Okay, if you, Professor Alfred Nobel, who is the founder of the Nobel Prize, says that if I have 300 ideas in a year and just one turns out work. I'm satisfied. But we are not even getting a single idea, even for entire 365 days. That's, that is the issue here. So he is getting 300 ideas, but we are not getting even a single idea for the entire year. So we need to see where we are missing out, where we are missing out. And where we can get novel ideas. You know? could see you know, in movies where we are getting novel ideas. You may be remembering this scene. You know? He used to get an excellent idea of uh, combining this body with the, with the space, you know, so that future generation can think that this, he might have lived like this. Like okay, if you have an Alexa, okay, you can ask the question, can you give me some innovative ideas? And I bet it would answer that, have you ever thought about how I was invented? If you think how they were invented Alexa, then you will have some idea about how to innovate. So what we normally do is when we write a proposal or when we uh, write a paper, so um, when we uh, write a paper and we write a proposal, what normally we do is to uh, browse in it. And all of a sudden when we look at something, then immediately we call it as, yes, I got it, Eureka, I got it. So it is not a novel idea that we are what we are getting. What we are getting is an understanding of what other people have done it. And you may have some slight modification of it. Maybe a delta X fraction. Okay, that's what, what we got actually. But if you think that that itself is a novel uh, idea or novel work or you are trying to end up in some innovations or like that. So that is the problem here. I used to read some of the um, scientific science news from in Facebook, in social media, as well as Twitter and other things. 
So I happened to read one such idea that morning. It was published in Graphene Info. Where they said, no, the, a group of uh, researchers from China, they come out with a novel strategy. What they did is they stitched together reduced graphene oxide. So you might be knowing about uh, graphene, so graphene oxide and reduced graphene oxide. It is occupying a huge role. It plays a tremendous role and it is into everywhere. Graphene, graphene oxide and reduced graphene oxide are, are in every field over this. Okay. So what they did is to make it the film stronger, reduce the graphene sheets. Though. They stitched together the graphene sheets. And I asked my friend, you know, it's only a joke. I asked my friend, why we didn't get this idea? We are also working on graphene and reduced graphene oxide. And he immediately said that, okay, it's only a joke. Okay, he immediately said that, no, we learned about uh, graphene oxide and uh, reduced graphene oxide and graphene. But unfortunately, we never learned tailoring. We never learned how to stitch. Okay, so it's only a joke that I'm saying because we need what what it indicates that no, we need to um, learn across the field. We need to learn. We need to be able to understand and apply the concepts from other fields also. Then only it can able to you can take it to a higher level, to a better, to a different level. It is only a question of stitching a few sheets together, but it didn't strike us. So that's a way in which the innovations are going. Another thing, study from Dublin, Ireland. So these researchers, you know, they did a liquid phase exfoliation. Exfoliation is separation. Separating, you know, uh, what do you exactly exfoliation? Uh, if you take a notebook, you know, and uh, dip it in a bucket of water, you know, immediately the paper, uh, the notebook, you know, expands. It's also water and expands. It's called, it's something called exfoliation. Okay. So they did a liquid phase exfoliation of graphene, boron nitride, and tungsten disulfide nano sheets. Okay, these are all find very, very good applications in a variety of areas. And they used Irish whiskey for that. Again, a joke. I asked my friend, we should also try this. We should also explore this. He said immediately, yes, yes, we should also try that. I asked whether we can try graphene or boron nitride or tungsten thysulfate. And he coolly answered, no, this is the, this is the Irish whiskey. Mm -hmm. So we are also seeing, you know, we are also uh, thinking, we are also thinking uh, uh, many solvents and um, alcohols, etc. But we never thought of using a whiskey for uh, doing an experiment, you know, to for, particularly for explore, for exfoliation of uh, graphene or more of our two dimensional materials like that. So it is the idea that makes a difference. It is the idea that makes a difference. For us, you know, whiskey is a totally different thing. And we should never um, go for it for a scientific experiment. Okay, it is something different. It is something for uh, people are drinking for pleasure. It has nothing to do with science. Okay, so that's, uh, that, there lies the difference. And they thought about using a, a whiskey, Irish whiskey, for exfoliation. So that's the difference here. And another important development: you know, people used to open, you know, bottle caps using their tooth. And one person has come out with a development. Okay, what is that? It is a dental implant. It's a titanium dental implant in which they modify the top surface. Okay, like a opener. So that you will not have any problems in opening the bottle caps using your dental implant. So why I'm saying this? No, these are all. This looks to be crazy. No, this looks to be crazy. Who would uh, thought to put a, um, a bottle cap, a bottle opener cap thing in a, in a dental implant? Okay, but it is a crazy idea. But it is really creative. So now what I'm saying is, you should be creative. It should be totally different thinking. The Marty Yossi concept. So that's what we are telling. And we also invent, okay, there are certain inversions. Today I see, saw this photograph in uh, Facebook. Okay, they beautifully developed the tap so that they locked it and uh, so that other people cannot use, use the water. Okay, yes. so we also make some great innovations so that, you know, if we're in preventing others and are protecting us from, uh, from other people. So that's what we also innovate. Okay, thank you. And we look at that, you now, why we face difficulty in innovating? What's the topping us? Okay, so we are very good in science, we are learning a lot and we are really brilliant. The problem is, right, the building is strong, but the basement is weak. So we need to have a strong base, we need to have, uh, develop it from the childhood, you know, that, uh, that innovative aspect, the thinking, different aspect. So that need to be developed from the right, from the younger age. You cannot be, all, uh, you cannot be in an inventor all of a sudden. 
okay so that is difficult now learning only the concept and memorizing the text and reproducing in the uh, in the test paper and getting uh, uh, more than 90% of marks okay it may be good in certain aspects it may be able to get some uh, college seat admission and all but what about innovation innovation aspect that may not be enough that is not enough you need to have more you need to strengthen your uh, um, fundamentals very strongly so that is the key key See, we look at again, you know, why we face uh, difficulty in innovating. We are studying science and engineering, okay? And if you take science, if you ask science students, no, they are good in science. No doubt about it. They are very good. But what they lack is, they lack sufficient knowledge in engineering, design, device fabrication. Now, this device fabrication is becoming an important part in, a, in, in abroad for every PhD thesis that should not only uh, end with only a characterization or whatever they do, it should end up with the device publication. Here we don't insist on that. Here we insist only for some one or two publications in uh, in uh, UGC recognized journals. That's all. So that can be even even, pay, even paid journals. Okay, so not necessarily it should be of high reputation. So that's the difference. So they when they insist that the research, researcher should um, complete the thesis only with the device publication. So we don't insist on that because we also lack certain facilities. We cannot do, we cannot force our students to do that because we, we do not have enough facilities to do that. But ultimately, that is the problem. The science students lack that ability for engineering design and device fabrication. What about the engineering students? They are good in design. They are good in fabrication. And what about the science knowledge? In many places, we feel that no engineering people need not study chemistry. Engineering people need not study other, other some science subject. Because it is not required, because he is going to go in a particular stream. There is no need for science for engineering students. That's what our thinking is. I don't know. Maybe you may get some good jobs and with a good, with a nice, with a nice salary, but you cannot be an innovator because it is the integration of science and engineering knowledge that leads to technology innovations. You may come out with a good, very good idea, but it needs a very solid background of science. I need to translate into a design concept. You need to translate into a device. You need to translate into a product, finally. That needs the multidisciplinary knowledge of both science and engineering. Otherwise, we can't make innovations. We cannot make a, a great developments. We can study. OK, so that's the problem. Now, we need to transform ourselves from technology users to technology developers. We know what is the latest mobile. What is the latest app we know. We are using it every day. Okay, have you ever thought about why I couldn't be able to develop any app? Okay, we, we, we want to use it, that's all. Because we don't have enough, uh, uh, we, we didn't acquire enough skills for that. It is not a, it's not a tough job to develop an app. But we, we need to acquire the necessary skills, necessary background, necessary education. That is what we, we need to do, focus on. So, it is not only having the idea in mind but we need to assimilate the ideas so we, we will be having plenty of ideas you know we have plenty of ideas in our mind but we need to assimilate it okay and transform into an innovative product so that is the basic thing you gain a knowledge you gain an understanding you need to have certain ideas and, and all these things you put together and transform to a saleable product to make a, some innovation so that is what the difference that we are looking for that we are we need to go for we need to transform it is like this, we need to transform from here to here. Okay, with using the knowledge and experience and acquire necessary skills for that. So this immediately comes with your question, no? If you if your question is, do you want me to innovate something? I would say yes. I would say yes to everybody. You need to do it. Okay. And talking about innovations, no. I said we have a long way to go. And we have plenty of talents. It is not easy. It's not a one-day job. We need to understand that. So whenever we talk about that now, we need to talk about the strength as well as the limitations. Because the limitations only will tell how much you need to improve, how much you need to improve, where you need to go, and what you need to do, how exactly you are going to come out of the measures, correcting measures. So that is very important. We need to understand the challenges also in front of us. So now let us see the science and technology innovation policy of uh, by issued recently by the government of India. It's very nice. I just uh, happened to read that 
book it's a pdf file is available in the internet so the main focus is to achieve technological self reliance that is very very important because only through that we could able to position india among the top 3 scientific superpowers and what is the timeline we got time frame we got is about a decade in about 10 years we need to able to accomplish the task we need to achieve technological self reliance yes we can do that for that we need to attract we need to nurture we need to strengthen and most importantly we need to retain critical human capital we need to retain okay we know how much brain drain is going on how many people are going abroad and uh, people are not coming back so we need to not only uh, attract or nurture or strengthen but we need to retain people also and we need to do things through people centric program people centric science yes, technology and innovation ecosystem yes, people centric youtube and it is very important i i feel very happy that you know according to this new policy they are going to double the number of full time equivalent researchers not only that they are going to double the gross domestic expenditure on r&d and not only that we are they are going to involve the private sector contribution to this fund so all three things should definitely have a greater impact on our research programs definitely more innovative ideas will come more innovations will follow I guess I'm confident, and not only that to build individual as well as institutional excellence that is very very important with the aspirations to achieve the highest level of global recognition. That is what we target. What is the ranking that we have? What is the ranking our institutions have got? Where we stand in a global in a global scenario? Okay, so we need to get global recognition in our words in the coming decade. So for that we need to develop institutional of excellence. Okay. So that is the main thing that the science and technology policy is going on. And some of the key features are very interesting. No? Particularly we talk about open science. We all talk about open science today. Okay, everything should be available. So according to the open science policy, the public will have the right to access the right to access scholarly publications, research data. there will be um, a for um, database will be developed so all the research data will be available publicly pub, pub, particularly for public funded research programs and research infrastructures instruments because many students today research students the main problem is availability of research infrastructure in schools in many places it is not there so that is the problem and computing facilities libraries learning spaces so all these things open space is going to be okay so it is not at open it is not at open we are all waiting but when the door will open okay you might talking about open science no you, you might uh, i need to say about this uh, lady alexandra ebakian okay she is actually the creator and the founder of aca hub this is a website and which provides free access to research papers and according to a recent statistic they said over a billion billion of science article that downloaded from this site since 2011 okay and she is called the science uh, pirate pirate queen and uh, it is interestingly she is listed in the top 10 people that mattered in science by nature publications in 2006 because many of us we don't have access for research papers if we don't have access for research papers how could we know what exactly the other research has done and what i need to do what i need because we need to identify the gap in research then only i can able to can't make some contribution there is no point in repeating the same work again and again and without knowing what they have done how they have done how could i be able to an explain the researchers in india could able to make a contribution but so far science he has uh, done a wonderful job though it is against uh, Uh, the ethics against the copyright violation. Yes, it is a copyright violation. It is against ethics. We should not allow. We should not uh, give private free access to uh, the somebody's work. So now uh, the um, publishers like elsewhere, Wiley Scientific, as well as American Chemical Society, have sued for um, for copyright infringement, and they requested the IT ministry to block access to SA Hub. And uh, SA Hub now you cannot download papers published in the year from. 2021. The court has given the ruling that from 2021 you cannot download the uh, recent papers. Clearly, from 2021 you cannot download from ACI. And uh, we researchers are really facing a lot of problem because, as I said, the open open access door is not open for us, and we still we are struggling where where to find articles. Thank you.
Oh, so this is the website, website that knows uh, SA Hub to be able to see. Okay, now the access is denied, for, yeah, particularly for papers published in 2021. Because what I'm saying is that science and technology policy has come out of that open science program, but still it, is, it, uh, it, uh, it has a long way to go to implementing because. So that's why they, they talk about you no know, one nation, one subscription. This is the latest in the series, one nation series. Okay, one nation subscription. And the, as, as per the thing, the government of India will negotiate with the journal publishers. Okay, and all individuals in India will have access to journal articles. That's a wonderful news, but we are all waiting when it is going to happen. Okay, and there's no need for any individual institutions to pay for journal subscriptions. That's a good news, really good news. But when it is going to come, then we need to wait. And what the policy says about research facilities, because as a researcher, we always look into the money in open access and research facilities. So as the really open access policy that all public funded, all public funded scientific resources, that is funding received by DST and all other funding agencies, will be made shareable. Some people might ask, it is already there. Yes, it is already there, but it is, uh, I don't think very only few people have shared that. Okay. Now, the, now, starting to the new policy, it should be made shareable and it should be accessible nationally with the use of digital platforms. Okay, you should be able to access. Okay, so that is the main important feature. And these scientific resources not only limited to research infrastructure or laboratory facilities, but also for artificial new engine based resources. High performance oh, computing facilities. Oh, because these facilities are available only in second lab abilities. Now they say that as per the open access policy, that even if you are sitting in Pyramid or in your institution, we will be able to use these facilities. Of course, the mechanism should be implemented and the people should be cooperative so that everybody can become a good learner and contribute much. And we also talk about capacity development, particularly on three aspects. First, on education and research, how we need to develop our capacity so that we can go towards the innovation. Okay. To include true scientific temper, discipline, honesty, national pride, adherence to the principles of justice, gender parity, ethical practices, and the spirit for fair competition and development. Beautifully drafted. Okay, beautifully drafted. So we need what we need to inculcate in our, to our people, to our, to our students. And creation of innovation hubs is a fantastic thing. It should be done in partnership with higher education institutions, private industries, and local communities. So local communities will say what they require, and private institutions, industries should be ready to take it up so, and, and make it as a product, and as the higher education institute should coordinate, and then uh, through the innovation hub, they should be able to develop what is required for each and every local community. Okay. And not only that, they collectively share the resources for curriculum renewal as well as faculty development, all these things in the renovation offices in the This is fantastic new section. And uh, to introduce innovation and design thinking in the curriculum. This is what I was telling you. The science students, they lack engineering design. So we need to introduce the innovation concept, the design thinking in the curriculum itself. And that too from the child, from the, from the early ages. So that is the main aspect that is going to make the difference in the, in the coming years. So we need to achieve that, uh, that you know, self-reliance concept in the report. Check 
In research and development, but need to develop into research universities, not only teaching, they focus on research also. Okay, this will foster better linkage between the research and education and the effective utilization of research infrastructure. Because the infrastructure is not only developing infrastructure, we need to use it properly for the infrastructure. So, proper utilization of equipments that is very, very important and need to do it and need to do it collaboratively. That's very important. Beginning concept. And again, expanding science and technology system promoting foundational and translation research, they focus on seeding new research fields in advanced areas. The problem is, you know, many researchers joining in universities and they are associated uh, with uh, any supervisor. And what happens is when they start a research program, the supervisor will say that, you know, you go through the laboratory and whatever the facilities available in our laboratory, particularly, not only in laboratory, particularly in their group, in his laboratory, the, the principal investigator's laboratory, and uh, design or design a topic according to that. And that stops our innovation ideas, innovation programs, our a significant contribution to the scientific field. Because we need to work on new research fields in advanced areas. What we are doing is we are tying up our own hands, saying that that facilities, all these facilities are not available in our own uh, supervisor's laboratory. So whatever the facility that is available, only with that I'm doing it. So you are spoiling yourself. Okay, we, well, who stop you from going for a, working on advanced research areas? Who stopping you to for the leading advanced areas? So the government should not only do that; they should identify. You know, they should constitute a committee. They should identify new upcoming areas of research in advanced areas, and they need to develop research centers with exclusive facilities to pursue to develop those areas. And every researcher in every university should be allowed to participate and go in the program and do do the research facilities so don't restrict yourself you know uh, just because my supervisor lab is only has this facilities i am doing only this research that is not going to take you anywhere so that is the thing that we need to change <coughs> excuse me industry priority areas in which india should emerge as a leader world leader so for that how we are going to participate how we are bringing the industry we are going to bring the R&D institutions. Like to going towards how we are going to align towards the industrial needs. Establish mission mode programs, it is already there, nano mission DST is there. But still we need to identify the areas of agriculture, water, health, energy, and environment. 
again i'm saying energy and environment health energy and environment important areas water purification agriculture sectors b and encouraging strong collaborations at the individual as well as institutional levels facilitate collaboration between industry academia of course it is there already you now many industries and many academies are they signed an mou and they are working together but most most importantly with the shared financial resources okay many investigators they have prepared proposal and submit to the industry asking for funds and the industry may hesitate to give say for example uh, 10 lakhs okay the investigator is asking for 10 lakhs and the industry is interested in the product or interested in the development but not willing to pay the money so what the uh, new policy is proposing is you should have fair shared financial resources let the university pool about 5 lakhs of the 10 lakhs let the industry pool 5 lakhs of that money so that the investigator works towards it and develop the product what is there so the industry can take it okay after that they can collect the money from the industry the university can collect the money so that sort of change we need to go for okay the shared financial resources it may be risky sometimes you may end up you may not end up with the what you um, aim to accomplish in the case you cannot say no i have given you 10 lakhs but you didn't deliver it okay so that should not be there we should, they should also be ready to face the risk and ready to share the benefits if the if technology is transferred the university is going to be benefited because all the money is going to come all the royalty money as well as the initial principal amount is going to come to the university enhancing the quality of research we have been always talking about enhancing the quality of research okay to research excellence and uh, develop a talent pool and this all will always be there and we need to work on that continuously research ethics that is more important and uh, in many places the ethics is gone okay and uh, that is a sad part of it actually and uh, again safety protocols follow all these things there are some other guidelines that and uh, main thing is deepen the industry academia linkage it is already there but we need to work on that foster critical thinking and the scientific uh, impart scientific temper at the school and undergraduate levels so at that level we need to focus is there is no point in bringing uh, a student up to the phd level and then okay i will do ask him to think critically and create a scientific temper uh, that they may be too late okay and uh, develop innovation clusters things are doing so even in madras university now there is no that uh, i saw that yesterday now there is they started a center for uh, to uh, rusa okay rusa program and then uh, they are planning to invite uh, like a, a group of people from industry then they will be staying here uh, for for some for at least one or two years and they will be working with the researchers and academicians so they develop a cluster okay the, and the development of technology parks for collaborative activities and we need to cast, share the cost and intellectual property creation so that um they can collectively you know, go for a you know, joint success program and create a conducive environment for sector specific innovations i always say that no never stop watering that tree because it is most important for innovation whatever you feed your brain is that will you no know, it is mainly the it is this the neuronal activity the neurons are doing the job so whatever you feed the neuron and the neuron going to do that job only so if you feed okay uh, okay what is the latest movie and what is the latest thing uh, or what is the serial that is going on and i think so that will count on that and they will start processing on that so we need to think and what we feed them so that is very important and our growth aspect is also very important and be keen to recognize the available opportunity because the many many problem is many of us are not getting the right opportunity okay we may be very good but we are not getting the opportunity in the right time and the right place and so we should be very keen to recognize the available opportunity not only that even if you get an opportunity we need to know how to use it properly how to use it how to use the opportunity correctly okay what you should be doing you should be putting the ladder like there in tying up the shoelaces so we should now also learn how to use the opportunity correctly and uh, we have limited resources we all know that we have limited resources but effective use of available resources if we, we learn to use effectively available resources and we have a strong self belief that i can do will definitely make you fly high so this is an important uh, thing that we need to remember never underestimate your own potential that 
you can be a very good contributor to scientific development or you can be an innovator definitely so that we need to remember always and as uh, Frances Arnold, who was a Nobel Prize winner in chemistry in, uh, in, 2000, in 2015, she said, we need science and we need the smartest minds. So we are all smart. We don't believe that. We don't think that, you know, I, am, I don't think that I'm smart enough to make innovations. We never know what is in stock with you. You may be thinking about something, that something will spark in your mind. You may, you may come out with an excellent idea. Now, you need, need to develop the ideas. You need to, uh, you know, allow it to bloom. Uh, in their your mind that's something you need to correlate things you need to correlate you need to develop the ability to um, correlate and learn across the field how to use you know how to use the stitching concept you know for a graphing sheet so you need to work upon you know apply the solutions from different fields of study different fields of uh, um, uh, discipline different different discipline that's more important and we always remember that we still have a lot to learn Okay, after the Kaiman Kalada We still have a lot to learn. We still have so much to learn. So with that, I would like to um, include my uh, my lecture and I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Participants can ask me a questions or any discussions you can make with you. <coughs> you can also post it in the chat box also if you have difficulty in speaking. What we are going to left out of the future generation. What we are going to left out uh, instead of answering that, no, we um, we need to think what we are going to really have. No, say they say that no, we don't ask a child what do you want to become, whether you want to become a doctor or engineer. Then. Okay, you ask the child what do you want to do it for the society, what you are going to contribute for the society. Okay, so that kind of. Uh, thing that we need to cultivate for uh, the younger generation. So, we, you know, we need to preserve our nature, you know, we need to concentrate on uh, uh, global warming, you know, it is, it is really getting hot, you know, it is really getting hot every day, the temperature is rising, uh, at least by 60 degree, by one, I guess, if they said it is up to 1.5 degree, now the global temperature has increased, and if we don't to do, uh, take proper measures, you no, know, okay, then it will go, go to raise by, raise by 6 degree by another um, few years, then it will be a problem, major problem. So then we need to concentrate on uh, you know um, protecting our environment, uh, the global warming. All these things are very important, and particularly you know the younger generation. We need to teach you know uh, that you know materialistic things. Material is required, money is required, but it is not everything. That need we need to teach teach them. So that is more important. I feel that you know. money is important. Money is important for everything. Okay, we are always, you know, researchers going behind the funding agencies, please give us money, please give us money. Because we need to something, we need money. So money is important. Money is important for everybody. Okay. But something beyond that also we need to think. Not only we need to limit only ourselves only for the money and materialistic benefits. We need to think, think much beyond that. The shareability of public funded resources. Does it mean a researcher from a college can use the facilities of IITs or any premier? Yes, absolutely right. What you are telling, um, Mr. Panchal, okay, what you are telling is absolutely right. That's what the policy says. But I said, that, no, the implementation may take some time. It's not easy to break the doors. You're knocking at the door, but the door should open. It will open quickly. But that's what the policy says. That is what we are going for it. Because that is what we are just preventing you. Okay, you may be a good, uh, uh, you may have a good idea, but to execute it, to explore it, to to verify whether it is going to work or not, we need to have the facilities. 
the facilities are not available everywhere so all the public funded facilities public funded facilities should be made shareable so that means the facility suppose an investigator of uh, 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 purchased a machine which uh, from uh, sponsored by department of science and technology through government of india then that machine should be shareable to you that's what the policy says of course there may be some restrictions or uh, they may they may not allow you to use directly so they may have to approach one of the, one of the student or uh, some technicians in the laboratory so that they can do uh, help for you they can do the help thing so that might be the limitation that may be imposed but it should be made shareable so that's what uh, the new policy that we are going for the government of india is going for otherwise you know things will not change you know you will never get the facility and uh, you can never come up with anything so so that is the idea do you feel guilty for using sab yes but without this i could not able to make contribution so recently i have submitted a chapter book chapter on additive manufacturing and uh, dr sasi is here dr sasi knows about it okay so i wrote uh, the book chapter for about 60 pages okay how come i could write for uh, chapter for book chapter for 60 pages without reading into a manuscript and i don't have the resources here in india yes in korea uh, yes the, the, fortunately they have, they have got subscription so i could able to download all the papers but what about in india after coming back from to india i need to use only sa hub because i cannot collect all the papers okay unless otherwise unless and otherwise your institution has subscribed for this journals it is not possible to get there are certain um, researchers who, who are kind enough to share you now you can send a reprint request you can do that but it is difficult and without that we cannot write without that we cannot write so i am saying i have used the sa hub and uh, and i don't i feel guilty but i do not have a choice i do not have a choice because i feel that no the chapter that i am writing should be useful for the readers ultimately no for for whom you are writing for whom you are working the somebody should be a uh, benefiter out of that somebody should read a good stuff okay so there is no point in writing just like that without reading so unless otherwise the doors are open i don't have a choice so that's the thing So, so this is Dr. Mahalingam. So, can you hear me? Yes, sure. sure. So, do you think uh, what about the making some research park facilities, like an interface between academia and you know the private uh, companies, yeah, that they can come together, they can you know yes. share the facilities. Yeah. So, I think that is the way in US they can promote all the you know the innovative yeah, it is, research. It is already there. It is uh, it is already there in even IIT Madras. IIT research park is there nearby. the yeah. nearby campus iit research park is there and yes, many yes. companies are there many companies are there they are working together with iit madras and then uh, they are having collaborations with uh, with other companies in uh, uh, northern india also i know and uh, they particularly with the with the ambani group so uh, they are the private uh, government partnership is going on and uh, yes. lot, a lot of research parks is there already iit research park is there and many places it will emerge it will come it will come in all the places okay. and you are play yeah. maybe you can bid you can bid you know your your institution um reputation considering your institutional reputation the psg group okay yes yeah and yeah. you can go for it you can bid for it you can contact mhrd and uh, say that you know you can uh, uh, mobilize so that you can start a um, research park in your area point for area okay so yeah that, i think that is the way i think we can promote all the innovative yeah, so that research. you can get all the facilities and the people in the local area surrounding can able to benefit out of that research park yes yeah, yeah yeah and a lot of industries are there you know because uh, being a industry hub coimbatore is being an industry hub that will uh, you uh, you have a lot to say that no that will be beneficial to all the industries around now. so and you can collectively collect uh, uh, responses from the industry people you know maybe some uh, um some that should be some association industrial association and uh, they can give a letter that of support that you know if uh, such a center or a, um hub is uh, generated or created in psg it will be very useful for us that will have a lot of say you may have to talk yes. to the people and then collectively work together and then um edit yeah okay sir yeah yeah that is the way at least we can promote some innovative yeah, ideas sure, sure. research yeah okay sir yeah thank you so much for reviews on the competitive examinations of our country do you think they are beneficial for uh, finding researchers 
example, through competitive exam, we cannot identify a researcher. That is difficult. Now, once I said in an interview to the committee members, now the sensors, the sensor that would be able to detect the willingness of a person to work is yet to be invented. We don't have a sensor. Whether a person is willing to work, willing to make the significant contribution, we can't use any sensor. There is no such sensor available. Nobody has invented anything. So like that, it is difficult to identify a researcher through uh, competitive exams. But we are still following it, you know, because we need to have a system. We need to have a system to select people. Because there are several thousands of people. We can't give opportunity of the country. They, the, science, the funds are limited. So they can't give fellowships to each and everybody that whomever is interested in research. So we, they need to have certain device. And time being, they are coming, uh, coming out with a competitive exam and uh, they, they go for uh, uh, based on their uh, um, master's degree program or whatever it is. So based on that, it is being evaluated. But um, research capacity and research ability is totally different from uh, passing a competitive exam. So that I could say that. So, so if somebody could not be able to pass in a competitive exam, that doesn't mean that they are not good researchers. They may be excellent researchers. But we need to break the barrier and passing the exam to, be, to become a researcher. So that's what the, the existing situation is like. That. That's what, no, no, the research is something different. Research is not like a college degree program. It's not like a master degree program that that you will learn, okay, some of the, like in organic chemistry, organic chemistry or uh, biochemistry or uh, no, some genetics or something like that, you learn and uh, write an exam and pass. Research is not like that. You need to, um, you know, develop many things. Okay. Actually, now our evaluation system for even for a PhD program is totally different, you know. What we insist that we need to collect some data and we need to uh, submit a, a book finally to the university. We need to publish at least one or two papers in international journals. And based on that, some examiners will evaluate and uh, a degree will be awarded to you. It is not the, like the research program. Actually, research involves, you know, if you want a person to be awarded with a PhD degree, you now he should have acquired many skills. He should have acquired many skills. Unfortunately, the evaluation program in any university is not like that. They simply test whether you have submitted a book. Maybe somebody might have written the book. Maybe somebody might have helped to write the papers. So how will you truly evaluate the researcher? So it, is a, it should be involved the program for the entire uh, four, three to four years program, years evaluation of each and every aspect of whether you could be able to present well, whether you could be able to write well, whether you could be able to defend his views, whether um, he's very good in uh, operating the instruments. Every, every skill is important for a researcher. So there should be a periodic evaluation of the capability of a researcher based on which he should be awarded the PhD degree rather than you know, based on only a submission of a bounded bound volume in one or two publications. So that should soon change. That is my view. How about future scope for the science stream based person? Yes? Sasi. Don't, you are ever a science person. No, don't, uh, don't say that science stream has the, no scope for it. Science has a lot to offer. Science Without science, nothing is there. Okay. Science stream uh, based person has certain future is there. Of course, there are stiff competition. There are stiff competition because uh, people have uh, no disbelief. People have disbelief because of, uh, they could not be able to stand in the competition. That's a problem. We have too many people. We have too many people. and. Uh, and uh, we are not getting enough opportunity. And that gives a disbelief that, you know, um, whether I have chosen a wrong area, whether I have chosen uh, something, whether I did something wrong in my program. So as um, uh, Professor Mahalingam said, no, science never ends. That's a good, a good point to add. Okay, so uh, we have to you know, cope up with the, uh, with the situation. But science has a lot to offer. Science has a lot to offer. So, um, so what else I can say, Dr. Sasi?
Thank you, Dr. Srini. Thank you so much, sir. I hope everyone is clear with the concept. We'll move on. Uh, gratitude makes sense of a past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. Now, I'd like to invite Dr. M. Rajkumar, sir, Assistant Professor, Department of Chemistry, to convey the oath of thanks to everyone present here. Uh, good evening, everyone. I take uh, immense pleasure in proposing the vote of thanks for this a National Science Day webinar conducted by PhD College of Arts and Science. I am very well thankful to the management for providing us the permission in short duration. I place my sincere thanks to our secretary, Dr. Kanayan sir, and beloved principal, Dr. Brinda madam, for extending us all support. And I thank the wonderful guest speaker of today of the program, Professor Sangra Narayan sir from uh, department of analytical chemistry madras university for readily accepting our invite our invitation in spite of his busy schedule it's very short schedule i gave him uh, finally i thank all the participants and also my co-coordinators for arranging this uh, webinar in the short time thank you once again thank you all thank you dr Rajman. thank you dr Rajman. thank you Thank you very much, sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. You. Uh, we can wind up the webinar, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you sir. Yeah, sure.